local food awareness organization ProVeg South Africa is hosting what it calls a rebellious plant-based plant -based braai. Tongue twister there. This is despite the Department of Agriculture's recent stance against plant-based meat alternatives being allowed to be used uh, to use food rather uh, to use food terms such as nugget, burger, and sausage. Let's discuss this rebellious spry. I'm joined now by ProVeg South Africa's country director, Donovan, Donovan Will. Donovan, good evening. Thank you for your time. I did not even imagine, I did not even imagine that there would be controversy here. But obviously there is for you to even say that the bride that you are hosting um, as part of, you know, heritage celebrations, uh, as many people do, you are describing it as being rebellious. Yeah, so I mean, the bribe probably itself isn't rebellious, but the thing is that when the government is saying to us that we can't call a veggie burger a veggie burger, and we are planning on having a bribe with maybe a thousand veggie burgers, then you can see the the rebelliousness in that. And a lot of the manufacturers that we work with, and a lot of the a lot of our partners were were wondering if there'd be a bride day bribe for ProVeg this year. We've had them in the past before um, before COVID happened. And a lot of people wondered, you know, maybe we shouldn't have it because so many of these companies are under a huge amount of pressure to try and figure out what to do. And we just said, you know, as ProVeg, we want the, the public to come and try these products. You know, most people have never heard of them or seen them or tried them. And now that they're in the news and the government saying, you know, we want to ban them because they're called burgers, a lot of people are very interested. And we think this is a perfect opportunity for the public to come and try these burgers that, um, that may land up being illegal at some point. Yeah, I, I, I can see that you are determined in being rebellious. I, I, in talking about it, you are already saying that you plan to have maybe a thousand burgers, uh, despite the fact that part of the concern is that uh, perhaps the Department of Agriculture would rather you don't call them burgers. But what's in a name, though, Donovan? Why does it matter, uh, why does it matter whether they are called burgers or... Uh, I don't know, sausage or nuggets or whatever other term is put to it. Why is an issue being made of that? Well, so from our side, there's, there are a lot of different elements to this. You know, there's the there's wording like burvos and biltong that are very heavily regulated. And then there are words like chicken style or chicken flavor, which, you know, chicken flavor is is allowed everywhere. But chicken style, are we allowed to call burgers chicken style if they mimic the taste and texture of of chicken, but they don't have chicken in them. And then there's words like burger that are that are regular words in the English language that have been used for, for vegetarian products for, for, for years. I mean, in South Africa, we've got the, the Fry Family Food Co. have had veggie burgers, or have had, um, you know, traditional burgers made of, of vegetable products on the shelf for 30 years. So we don't think there's a lot of controversy around these words. The controversy is the government threatening to seize these products um, because they don't think that these words should be allowed, even though there's no evidence that consumers are being misled or consumers are confused. Is that the charge? Is the charge that um, these labels are confusing and misleading to consumers? Well, yes. So the, the, the companies that we work with who have received directions from the, the FSA, from the Food Safety Agency, um, those directions have said that in terms of the APS Act, that these words are misleading. And again, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no proof of that. There's no evidence of it. There's, we really don't think that's the case. And um, originally, the department um, relied on regulation um, 1283, the, the, the processed meat regulations, which actually specifically exclude meat analogs. So from our point of view, it's relatively clear cut. There's, there's no confusion. And what we need is we need regulations specifically relating to meat analogs, which ProVeg and the rest of the plant-based um, industry have, have asked for and the meat industry has asked for. And the government has said that they would look into that. So we would, we would love for the government to, to stop threatening to seize products and to rather come to the, the, the discussion table and, and come up with a bunch of regulations that actually work for everyone. For a moment, when you say when you said to rather come, I thought you were going to invite them to this uh, this this uh, bride that you are planning to have. Um, I see that part of what you're discussing, uh, Donovan, and uh, part of part of what you raise is whether the bride itself, the concept of the bride and good food and celebrating um, South African cuisine, is the heritage or is it meat? 
um, that, that, that is part of the heritage, you know, bride meat uh, and, and, and brying meat. Uh, and and are, you, are you settled? Uh, if, I, if, I, if I attend this braai that you're going to have and I enjoy some of these uh, plant-based meat alternatives, um, will I have the full South African bride uh, food experience? So uh, that's such an interesting question. And for, for someone like myself who ate meat for, for 30 years, and I was that guy who went to a braai and I would just bring a steak or, or chops or, or burravos. I didn't worry about the, the sides and the veggies and, you know, the bride millies. And I was really worried that when I stopped eating meat, I would miss out on that social interaction. And it couldn't be further from the truth. And anyone who comes to this braai, and we definitely are going to invite the, 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 the government, we're going to invite people from the meat industry. A lot of them who I've spoken to have never tried these burgers. So it's a perfect opportunity for that. But yes, we are very convinced that anyone coming to this braai will have the same experience. And for us, it's really important to think about what heritage really is. Is it the meat that goes in the braai or is it the braai? Is it the, you know, the friendships? Is it being healthy? Is it looking after our environment? Is it looking after our health? You know, we can have all the fun. We can have all the same experience, but just eat these products that are made slightly differently. And, um, you know, no one's going to be missing out. Yeah. And is there a growing take up um, in people preferring these plant-based um, meat alternatives to actual meat? So we definitely see it. At the moment, ProVeg is trying to find some some market sizing data in South Africa, which is a little bit difficult to come by. A lot of the retailers classify these products differently. But when we look anecdotally, when you walk into any major retailer, you will see the number of these products available is growing significantly. If you go into restaurants, you will see the same thing. There's very few restaurants that don't have vegetarian options. And many, many, especially in major cities, will have lots of vegan options as well. So we know that in South Africa, it's happening. And around the world, especially in Europe and America, where we often follow those trends, uh, meat consumption is reducing and people eating more, more plant-based. Not only these products, you know, it's not only about uh, meat replacement products. Even at the braai, we will also have options like falafel burgers and mushroom burgers, you know, for people who want to eat whole food plant-based, not necessarily a, a product that's trying to mimic meat. Um, but we do know that people, as they see the benefits, the health benefits, environmental benefits, the ethical benefits, the food justice benefits, you know, the fact that we could feed way more people in the world if we just ate the plants directly rather than feeding, you know, we feed 60% of the, the grains and legumes that we grow around the world to animals, then we raise those animals and then we, we slaughter them for food. We would be able to feed a lot more people if we cut out the, the middleman or the middle animal. Mm. All right, I've got to thank you for your time and your insights. It's fascinating. I, I, I imagine that we'll be checking in once you've flipped uh, those thousand or more burgers, uh, <laughs> even though they'd be insisting that you don't call them burger, nugget, and sausage. That is Donovan, uh, Donovan Will, uh, who is South Africa Country Director at ProVeg there, talking to us about what they are calling a rebellious um, plant-based plant braai uh, that they're planning to have.